welcome to the new video. Sorry that I'm looking a hot mess, but I am working away. As you guys can see, my hair looks really good. Hi, hello. This is me. It's fine. Um, so I have my little helper here. He's kind of slacking on the job a little bit. Wow, I really don't know what's happening with this hair. Can you just like chill, please? That would be wonderful. No? Okay, awesome. Um, but as you can see, I am organizing all the things. For one of my assignments in one of my classes for grad school, I have to submit an ultimate diagnostic reference binder. So I am working on that right now. I am going extremely over the top because I plan on taking this with me like into the field whenever I graduate and I want to just be able to actually use it as a reference. Like if I'm going to do it, I'm not going to like half-ass it for lack of a better term, um, I'm going to do it well so that I can actually use it. So you might remember like a year ago, in between finishing my undergrad and starting grad school, I created this, an SLP review binder. So I just emptied this bad boy out and I'm kind of making it all one huge reference binder. So this is no longer in service. So that is over there. Um, but the first step that I did was I decided what I was going to have all of my dividers in here say. And then I took all the papers that I had planned to use in here and I am I put them into piles based on which category they go in. Now I'm going in and I am kind of purging each pile because there is like duplicates of the information just presented in different ways. So I'm going through and kind of getting rid of what I don't really need in the binder. So that that's what I'm working on. This is making my heart so happy. I am like an organization fiend and I like live for this kind of thing. So I don't mind doing this, but I can see how this would be like super overwhelming for some people. So that's why I wanted to show you guys like my method, like let you see what my dividers look like. And then when I'm all done, I'll kind of flip through and show you like what's in there. Um, so let me flip you around and show you what I have going on right now. Okay, so this bin here, I just got it from Target and it came, I think I put these in there. I don't know if it came with these or not, I can't remember. But each class that I take in grad school gets a little tab. So this was Foundations of Language Development. Let's see, what else? This one was School Aged Issues, and I have one of these for undergrad too. So every class that I take, anytime that there's a PowerPoint that I think is important, I always put a star on it during the semester, and then that way I can just put it right in here. That way I have everything in one place. And I don't know if I'll keep this when I graduate or not, but I just found that this stuff was important. It might help me in the future with like future courses and things like that. So that's how I keep all of my um, classes like organized once I'm finished with each class. Everyone say hi to Jaclyn Hill. Um, so we're gonna swing over here. Here is the binder that I'm working on now. This is something that I worked on last night, which I'll show you guys in just a second, and then I'll show you those in a second too. So, hi, are you awake now? Hello, okay. Uh, so the sticky notes, can you guys just, like, what is happening here? I'm not sure, he's very helpful. Um, anyway, the sticky notes are the names of the dividers, and then any of them that have the sticky notes on top of the pile are piles that I've already purged. So I have to go through and purge, clearly, you can see how messy it is, all of these, and then I'm going to transfer all of this into this and make dividers for each one. So once I do that, I will turn the camera back on and give you guys a peek through the whole thing, but I just wanted you to see this is like step one, just like organizing it before you throw it in the binder. That way you're not just putting papers in here and then you're like, I don't even know what the heck is in here. Um, so this way it's all organized and neat and pretty. So this is what it looks like before. Here's an overview, you guys, just so you can get an idea of the chaos that I am sitting in the center of. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, okay, so I just spent, I don't wanna talk about how many hours working on all one, two, three, four, five of these binders. I started last night. Okay, I probably worked on this for like five hours collectively. So it was very time consuming, but I feel so good having it all done and all organized. And plus part of it was an assignment for one of my classes. Um, again, I went overboard because <laughs> I'm me, that's what I do. Um, but I wanted to show you guys kind of what all of these binders are because if you love organization as much as me, I don't don't want to keep this information from you. So the three gray binders that you guys saw, these are one inch binders. I have one that says SPA 5500 SLP in schools and then in the bottom down here SCH and there's nothing in there right now. Um, this one SPA 5526L 
clinical practicum, child diagnostics lab, and then down here, CDL. So there's that one. Again, nothing in that one, and then nothing in this one. This one is SPA 5432 autism, and then AUT down at the bottom. So in the past, I have done one binder for all of my classes every semester. And this semester, like, it just wasn't working. Like, the binder was, like, overflowing. I was having to clean it out, like, every week, and, like, it, it was a hot mess, a hot mess. I am doing an online program, so I am required to like print out like long lectures to like follow along with the video. I mean, I don't have to print it out, but like the way my brain works, I have to print it out and I like to write on it, highlight on it, like that's just what I have to do. So I decided to go ahead and make a binder for each class that I am taking in the fall. So these are my fall classes. I only have two and a half weeks left for this summer semester, so I'm not gonna like bother setting these up for the classes that I'm in now. We're just gonna survive until the end with the one exploding binder. Um, which, total side note, I am so excited to take this class. You don't even know. We weren't supposed to take this until next year, I think, but they bumped it up. Since we're going to be in the schools for our practicum this coming, or in the fall semester, um, they wanted us to have this information like while we were in the schools. So I'm so excited about this class. You guys know I will keep you posted. Um, and then something else I wanted to talk about. This little like code down here correlates with... Please hold. Everything goes together, y'all. Um, my planner, which if you guys know, I digital plan. So down here, for example, is a due date and there's like the little green sticker. And then up here, the green goes with DHH, which is my deaf and hard of hearing class. That's a class that I have this semester. I haven't set up my planner for my new classes because I don't have my syllabi yet. Um, but that's what these three letters down here are. Those are the, that's the code that I'll be using in my planner to go with this class. That way, I mean, it's obvious which is which, but I don't know, I just felt like putting it on there. Like AUT, autism, um, CDL, child diagnostics lab, and then SCH, SLP in the school. I just did SCH for school. Um, so that is kind of how I'm planning to set up my stuff for the fall semester. So I have this right here. Those are ready to go for the fall semester. Obviously, I will print out my syllabi. That will be in the front pocket. And then I will just put whatever I need to put in as the semester goes on. Okay. The next binder that I created is this one right here. This is Florida State University Speech Language Pathology Class of 2020. That is when I graduate. If you did not pick up on that, yes, I know it's far away. I don't want to talk about it. Let's just get into the binder. So this one I can't really flip through and show you too, too much because it's a lot of personal information. So this is kind of just where everything that I need for school that is not course specific lives. So for example, I can maybe show you a few things. Yeah, like I can show you this. So this is like my course sequence and it's like every class that I've taken, when I've taken it, the grade that I got, things like that. This right here is just um, a PowerPoint from my advising meeting that I had last night and I'm keeping it at the front just because it's something that I'm needing to grab a lot right now. Once I'm done with it, I'll either throw it away, recycle, don't worry, or just file it in the back here somewhere. And then some other things, I can show you these. I showed you guys this chart that I made last night. Um, it's just more graduation requirements, and then that is our course sequence, like by semester. I cross them out as we go because it feels so good. Um, let's see, next, it's uh, my research contract that I signed and my professor signed. Then I have all of my hours. Can I show you guys this? Maybe I should cover this number right Nah, it has my student number from my old university. I'm not gonna show you. Um, it's my observation log from undergrad. Um, okay, I can show you these things. This was my acceptance letter from Florida State. I am cheesy and just wanted to keep it in there. This is the research that I helped um, publish in undergrad. And then on the back page, yeah, I can show you this. Um, this is where I got authorship on the research project. I don't know if you guys can see because it is in a page protector, um, but there's my name right there. And then that was my professor. And then that's another professor um, in my undergrad program. So I wanted to keep that because truth be told, I honestly think that's a big part of how I got into grad school was having authorship. Pro tip. Um, then I have a registration guide because 
it never fails that I always forget how to register for classes every semester. I'm like, wait, what do I do again? So that helps with that. Then I have a PowerPoint that kind of just shows us how to set up our CASA portfolio in Calypso. Um, so our CASA portfolio is basically where we house all of our artifacts for the, for the program. Um, and we have to have that filled up in order to graduate. So it's just showing competency, competency in each area. So that's what that is. Um, and then this is just all um, FSU clinical documentation. So how to use Calypso basically. And then all of the clock hour information that we have to have for graduation. And then the last thing, oh, I save all of these. Cause when I'm all done, I wanna flip back and be like, yep, I did all that. This is my first one. And then I have one for this semester, but I didn't start this until my second semester. So I don't have one for my first semester, but it's all good. And then in the very, very back over here, oh, these are passwords, please hold. I have a folder here um, and that's where like all of my stuff that I need for practicum clearances. So like fingerprints, drug tests, um, medical records, things like that. So that is what this binder is. And then my last binder, which is the one that, please hold, coffee break. Okay, much better. So my last binder is the big daddy here. You can see it's humongous. I'm actually gonna go get a three inch binder. I think this is a two or one and a half or something. But um, when I go grocery shopping tomorrow, I'm gonna get a three because I know I'm gonna be adding more to this um, as I progress throughout my program. So this was my assignment. I had to create a binder for um, my class just to submit a, a diagnostic binder is what it's called. So mine is the SLP resource binder and I made little tabs for each one. So, oh gosh, clinical aids. And then I don't know if you can see kind of on the side there, those tabs right there. The tabs are in my font, by the way. And then this is an Amy Grossbeck font. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of read you each tab so you can get an idea. And then I have a table of contents in my computer because I had to submit that for the assignment. I didn't print it yet because I'm gonna wait until I get my big binder. Um, but the tabs are clinical aids, development, assessments and scoring, diagnosis and treatment, goals, and these all look the same, by the way, um, data and documentation, phonetics, and then the last one is neuro. So there's that. Um, and then all the stuff that's in here is stuff that I've saved from undergrad as well as stuff that I've collected while in grad school and just resources that I've made myself. So like my ultimate practicum packet, which I'll link down below, that is in here. Um, it's just tools that I plan to use in grad school, like for practicum courses, whatever. And I'm going to pull up the table of contents. Sorry, my email's going off, yikes. Let me turn off my sound, okay. And I will just read you the table of contents so you can get kind of a better idea of like the kind of stuff that is behind each tab. It would take forever if I flipped through each one, um, so I'm not gonna do that. But in the clinical aids tab, I have common SLP terminology sheet, which is in my practicum packet. Excuse me, I have a quick reference chart that has a bell curve, speech sound acquisition, um, and phonological processes chart, a detailed phonological processes sheet, common clinical terms, speech and language I can statements, common core language standards for, um, I think I have K through 12 printed out, uh, phonological awareness breakdown sheet, reading tips sheet, book list by speech sound list, and word list by sound. And then tab two, development, speech sound acquisition sheet, detailed phonological processes sheet. This one is not as aesthetic. That's why I have two. One, the, the clinic aid one, it's like very aesthetic. It's pretty, it's something I would show to parents. This one is more like scientific, like the nitty gritty. So that's why it's in this tab. Um, language acquisition reference packet. Um, tab three, assessments and scoring. I have the evaluation process flowchart, assessment guideline for each big nine area, oral motor exam checklist, which is in my practicum packet, hearing screening tips, voice evaluation tips, detailed assessment packet, uh, test scores PowerPoint. Um, it's basically a PowerPoint that one of my professors posted, just kind of helping us um, interpret test scores. Um, and then tips for score sheets, and I have like examples in there. 
Um, tab four, diagnosis and treatment. What's in there? Speech disorders, study guide chart, that was from undergrad, pathology summary chart from undergrad, speech sound disorders information, undergrad, a lot of this is from undergrad, you guys. Uh, fluency disorder information sheet, aphasia comparison chart, dysarthria comparison chart, apraxia versus dysarthria sheet, and I'll be adding sections as I take more courses. I had to put a little note that said that. Tab five is goals, and it is smart goals, quick check chart. Um, IEP example framework and then an example goal bank and then tab six data and documentation commonly used SLP documentation codes so like the ICD-10 codes um, articulation data tracker therapy data sheet from the clinic that I'm at now uh, soap notes PowerPoint soap notes samples and then sample reports um, obviously it's not actual information it's all just like sample stuff um, Tab seven, phonetics. I have my IPA reference sheet consonants, IPA reference sheet vowels. Those are in my practicum packet. That is in my TPT store. Um, IPA reference vowel quadrilateral, phonetics versus phonology sheet, and then the diacritics review sheet. I don't know if I'll need that, but I didn't want to throw it away. I don't know. I found it in my undergrad pile. And then tab eight, neuro and anatomy, brain anatomy graphic, Broodman's areas graphic, vocal tract landmarks graphic, functional anatomy of the lobes, cerebellum and brainstem, circle of Willis diagram, structures of the central nervous system, important arteries to the brain, cranial nerve chart. I take neuro anatomy in the spring, I think. Yeah, so I'm not really gonna be using that much until the spring, but I wanted to just have it in there so it's ready to go. And that is kind of what is in all of those binders. I am so sorry again that I look a hot mess when I'm explaining this to you guys, but I just spent a crap ton of time putting all that together and I was like, I am not, I'm gonna be in comfy clothes, I'm gonna throw my hair up and I don't need to do makeup for this. So here we are. Um, but anyway, I am going to go finish the rest of my homework, do my air conditioning job and head to the gym. I do not have class tonight, bless, like I'm so thankful. Um, I had class Monday night and Wednesday night. Advising was really good last night. I kind of already told you guys everything that went down with that. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off because I've been talking for a hot minute, but I will see you guys a little bit later. Hey guys, so I was just editing this video right now. It is the next day, maybe two days later. Uh, I don't know. It's Saturday. I don't remember if I made that binder on Thursday or Friday. All my days are blowing together. Finals are upon us and my brain is mush. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and film an outro for this video. I am going to do like how I set up all of my stuff um, for grad school for a new semester. Um, probably in like maybe like three weeks is when I'll film that video because um, I have a couple weeks off before I start my fall semester I have two more weeks left of summer semester and then I have three weeks off and then I have fall semester so I showed you guys the empty binders but I will show you guys like my planner um, my digital planner and those binders with like my syllabi and just like how I like to set everything up so that'll be in another video but thank you guys so much for watching if this was helpful or if you enjoyed it please make sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh yeah, and before I like put the little outro clip, I wanted to show you guys, I did get a thicker binder. So this one is two inches. So the other one must have been one inch and I transferred everything over and there's just a lot more room and everything isn't like as packed in, but the contents are the same. But I did get a gray one to match the other three binders for my classes. And then like I said, this one's a two inch. I just got it at Target. So I figured I would show you because the thumbnail picture is going to be this and I didn't want you guys to be like, uh, that's not even the same binder. I promise that it is. Okay, bye.